Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video I'm going to be unboxing, setting up and using the Sage or Breville Oracle Touch. Sage Appliances have sent me the Oracle Touch and the Oracle on loan only and as always this isn't a sponsored video or anything of that nature, I'm purely going to tell you my 100% honest opinion of these machines from using them. I occasionally get complaints when I do these videos that I don't go far enough in depth. So just to explain, this is the introductory video only, unboxing, setting up and making a coffee with it. This isn't the only video I'm going to be doing with the Oracle Touch. I will record various other videos, including a side-by-side -side comparison with the Oracle and the Oracle Touch, and I will do some much more in-depth videos with both machines. And if you want to see anything specific, please let me know in the comments below. So let's get it unboxed. Accessories, water filter and holder. It's got handles here, let's pull it out of the box with. There's your hopper. it comes with a filter and filter holder not in all countries let's open the accessories box mm. jug the scaler brushes group head brush and grinder brush water filter with double standard basket double shot single wall standard basket. Blanking disc for back flushing, a couple of cleaning tablets, a couple of Allen keys, standard basket, single rather than double shot. Not box, instructions. That says wrong way. Okay, so I've unboxed it, now let's set it up and make some coffees with it. RTCM stands for it, read the chuffing manual, so I'll do that first. Leave that in there for five minutes. And then change this to the current month. So now it's telling me the screen's gonna guide me through the setup, so We'll do that, uh, but I'll need to plug it in first, I think. Okay, so let's turn it on. Select language, English, start. Set the time and date. Install the bean hopper, I've already done that. Next, accessories checklist, filter baskets check, porter filter check. Filter holder, water filter, check. Water hardener strip attached to the instruction booklet, check. Got all them. Rinse before use. All the bits, water filter, uh, sorry, uh, water tank, porter filter. And we just realized that porter filter, water filter, right. Um, baskets. Do the water hardness test by pulling the strip off the instruction manual and sticking it in water for a second and then removing it and waiting for a minute. I'm not going to bother doing that because I know what the water hardness is here, so that would be a waste. And I don't think I need to show you how to do that. It's just dipping and strip into water. So I'm going to select soft because I know the water here is soft. Save. Now, this is where the on-screen instructions, they contradict slightly the instruction manual, it's a little bit backwards. It's now asking me, do I want to install the water filter anyway, even though the risk of scale buildup is low? Well, 
I've already done it because the instruction manual, I actually read the chuffing manual and it told me to install the water filter first and then do this. And now I'm doing this and you're telling me that I don't need to or you're giving me the option. So this is where the on-screen instructions just contradicts the manual slightly for anyone who does actually RTCM, read the chuffing manual, then you'll find that it's slightly contradictory. But anyway, do you want to install it anyway? Yeah, because I have done and then it tells you how to do it. Flush in the system, click purge, and hot water and steam will be flushed. Oracle Touch is now ready. So let the guides find out more about your Oracle Touch. Okay. So this tells you what everything is. Bean hopper, we know about group head. Water spout is back here, you just have to remember to push your cup back when you're putting hot water into it. Grind collar is here. Porter filter <coughs> is here. Steam wand is here. Tutorial. Step by step coffee tutorial. Let your Oracle touch guide you through each step of making your first coffee. You'll need freshly roasted coffee beans, got that, fresh cold milk, got that, and a clean damp cloth. It'll take approximately five to ten minutes. Okay. Fresh is best. Always buy coffee with roasted on date. Never rely on the used by date as a guide for freshness. Very good, I agree with that. Tip for best results, use coffee roasted within 14 days. I think, personally, each to their own, that is a bit over the top. I think you're fine with anywhere from a week to five, maybe six weeks of roast date. Certainly four weeks, I think, is fine. And if you disagree with me, that's fine, but just do a blind taste test. Just test it and see whether you can actually detect any difference at all. Um, or see whether, you know, dialing in, for example, is any different when you're talking, you know, three weeks or four weeks as opposed to two weeks. And I do not believe that there's any difference or much difference between, you know, two weeks and three weeks or four weeks, for example. But I like what they're saying about fresh coffee. Add freshly roasted coffee beans and add water to the tank. Top fill access is there. Or you can take the uh, water tank out. Let's make a latte to start. It's forcing me to have a latte, so okay. Let's make a latte, seeing as that's the only choice. These are all greyed out. Preheat your cup, need a cup. Hot water. Bear in mind, you do have to press stop to stop it again. It isn't going to pour a preset amount of hot water. It'll just keep going. So you have to press it to start and press it to stop. Next, let's filter into the grind collar. You say tip wipe the basket dry with a clean cloth before each coffee. Good practice. And I will say, I have changed the grind off camera. I think it was 30 or so. I've changed it to 15 because they do come quite coarse. Um, I think much more coarse than you'd need for most coffee. Um, so I changed that to 15. I probably need to go find them that one and dial in, but 
this isn't a dialing in video. So, there we go, and it's telling us to stick it in the group head and lock tight. So you'll see it says lock tight there. Make sure you don't have it stuck straight directly, but you actually lock it so it's coming out slightly. Next. Espresso extraction. Ideally, the pour should start to an 8 and 12 seconds. Watch the brew clock and note the time the espresso first drops from the spout. Now, it's forcing us to pull a single shot as if we've got the single basket in, but I've actually put the double basket in, but this is just the first Gelo coffee, if you like, so it doesn't really matter. Um, brew. And that's not bad, you know. We are using fresh, freshly, fleshly, freshly roasted coffee. And wipe the port filter. that it's what the book of coffee looks like when you knock it out next milk frothing fresh cold milk and a cold jug give the best results tip tip fill the jug oh yeah tip <laughs> fill the jug with cold milk to the bottom of the spout so this is the bottom of the indentation of the spout With the seam on, lower into the jug, I've done that. And for a latte, it's got a five on the froth level, and 65 degrees Celsius. So. Milk texture looks quite good, actually. Quite impressed with that. And there we have a latte. And from the first demo coffee, you know, just when you turn it on, I don't think that can be sniffed that. Obviously you can play around with, with everything. This is just a quick demo that it prompts you to do when you first set it up. But I'd be quite happy with that as the first coffee made with a machine like this on setting it up, that is quite good. Enjoy your coffee. We can repeat or we can go into tips. Manual espresso brewing, press and hold brew to enter manual brew mode, touch again to um, start, touch again at any time to stop. That's for manual. Manual milk frothing, lift the steam wand up to the up position and touch milk to start, touch again to stop. 
that's for manual milk frothing. Customize settings, select any setting to customize your coffee strength, milk texture and temperature just with the slider. And to save custom settings by pressing the add drink icon at the top of the screen. Save your drink, save up to six custom drinks that appear with your drink selection. Modify custom drinks, you can click edit or delete. Press and hold custom drinks to edit its values or delete it from the menu. Modify the cafe drinks, press edit or reset. Press and hold cafe drinks to edit or reset its values. Finish. There we go. So there you go, you've seen me unboxing and setting up the Sage or Breville Oracle Touch and using it for the first time. And as you can see, it's an incredibly simple machine to set up and to use for the first time. You literally just follow the on-screen instructions. And to say I'm impressed with it in terms of the cup quality from purely following the on-screen instructions as if it was someone who'd never used an espresso machine before would be an understatement. It's clearly a really clever machine, capable of great espresso and really good milk texture too, straight out of the box with no experience required. And although I've not used it extensively yet, I can tell you it's a brilliant machine in terms of convenience. It's so simple to use, handles just about everything for you, including automatically steaming the milk at the same time that the shot is pulling, meaning you end up with your coffee quite a bit quicker than you would do with a lot of machines. Most people would actually be up and running with this machine without much looking at the manual in very little time with little or no experience of using espresso machines. But I have lots of questions, as I've no doubt you will have too, such as how does it compare with the Oracle? Is it worth paying the extra money versus the Oracle? Are the Oracle and Oracle Touch worth the money versus the dual boiler? Do the Oracle and Oracle Touch have any limitations? And so on. And I'm going to be answering all these and more in videos coming very soon. So make sure you click the subscribe icon to subscribe and click the bell icon to allow notifications so you see these videos when I've done them. Thank you very much for watching and please click the like button. Thanks. It does something to do with algorithms or something and more people end up watching the video. So do that. Cheers. And if you enjoyed this video, then why not click here to watch another one. And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited coffee botherer. Also known as Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash coffee block kev. Tatty bye.